Hi, Roy. Um, I just want to say, you know, to you, thank you so much for all the years of um, support and being a great dealer to for us. Um, I don't really have a prepared speech. I, I hope that I wish that I could be there with you at the uh, International Q Collector Show, but um, this year again it didn't work out. But hopefully next year, you know, we'll have better planning and be able to get there. Anyway, um, I did a case this year for the, the theme of the show, which is the gambler cues or the gambler. Um, and, you know, I, I just wanted to do something special this time just from, from my heart and my own experience. Um, when I got in this game, you know, as a 12-year-old, you know, really, my first experiences with pool, um, almost from the beginning, were gambling on pool, you know, playing for quarters, playing for dollars. Um, and that's been since I was 12 years old. You know, it wasn't until later when I got to be about 17 that I started really doing it seriously. Um, and what I mean by seriously is, is really going and seeking out games. Um, I had a little bit of road experience. I went on the road. I've, I've, you know, I've, I've gambled high, you know, high for me. I've gambled up to $1,000 a set. Um, I never did actually, though, get into all the other gambling that people do. No horse races, no dice, no cards. Um, about the only thing I ever did was gamble a lot on pool. And, you know, I've been hustled. I, I've, been, I've been taken by better players than me. Um, I never really got into the hustling part of it. I never really tried to hide my speed. Every time I did that, um, I generally either, it ended up bad for me because I couldn't bring my speed up when it came time to win. Um, so I hustled myself, or, uh, or if I did manage to actually hustle someone and beat someone far weaker than me by deceiving them, then, uh, then generally I felt bad about it later. But, you know, over the years, I have, uh, I've just come, you know, for myself to just want to walk in and play my best and not really hustle, just gamble, just jump in and play. And that's not really the way to, to make a lot of money playing this game because uh, obviously, you know, people are, the, the better players are, are the ones that want to target you. But anyway, I, I'm getting off point here. The point is, is that I've been around, I've been around the, the gambling side of pool for a long time and I wanted to make a case that kind of reflected that more than just talking about the, the, uh, the normally when you see gambler cues, you generally see cues that are all about cards or dice, um, that sort of thing. And I wanted, to, I wanted to make one that represented not only pool, but also kind of the world of gambling as I see it and as I've experienced it. So with that in mind, let me show you my gambler case. Okay, the first side here, let me explain it a little bit first. Uh, the, the art on this case is all original. Uh, done by Dino Capreros. Um, he's my colleague now. He's an artist, um, a pretty good uh, cartoonist and artist, general artist. And he, uh, he did a real good job of, of bringing my theme to life. Now, you'll notice here, it says spot the sucker. Okay, so we start out with two pool players about to go into a pool room. And you'll notice that their, their conversation is, let's play it by the book. Okay, these two pool players already know what's going on in the pool room. They know who to play. Um, they know who's going to bet what. They know how to, how to talk to the players in the room. And uh, basically, they know everything about the people in the room, but the people in the room don't know anything about them. As we move forward through this, we get into the poker, where the same thing applies. The guy sitting down to the poker table, they know everything about the other players but the suckers don't know anything about them. So they know, they know just, how to, just how to handle all the players in the game. Then we move over here to the horse race, to the track, and the professional at the track, the professional gambler is the one that studies all, the, all of the moves. He knows all the horses, he knows all the trainers, you know, he knows where the doctor's been out, which horses run better on grass, and so on. So basically the theme of this is, Going back to that old adage in gambling, if you can't spot the sucker in five minutes, 
Well, then it's you. You're the sucker. So now this side represents more my experience in gambling, which is basically just being uh, pretty much a local hotshot who likes to gamble. So here you see the local hotshot is looking at the stranger about to come in the room and he doesn't know anything about this guy but he sure hopes that this guy wants to gamble. Okay, then we move over to the poker table and the same thing here. You got a nice friendly game going on with a stranger at the door and these guys just can't wait to get him in the game. Then we move on to the track. The same guy runs to the track with his little winnings that he might have won at pool and he doesn't know anything about the track. He doesn't study the horses but he's definitely got an unbeatable system. So basically that's what, that's what gambling is to me, Roy, is that it's got two sides to it. You got the fun guys, the guys that do it for the thrill, and you got the guys who do it as a job, professionally. Um, that doesn't mean that there's not crossovers there. You know, that doesn't mean that the professional pool player, professional pool gambler is not a sucker at poker, um, and vice versa. Um, it just means that there are people, there are, there's definitely two sides to this world. Some guys who do it professionally and look at it as a job and they try to maximize their chances of winning and when they gamble, especially at pool or cards, um, it's not even gambling. It's like stealing without a gun, as an old road player told me one time. And there's a lot of guys out there who just love it for the thrill. You know, if they win, they're on top of the world. They're chasing a drug they're chasing a high that you can't buy. That's the way I've always felt how it is. In pool, you have to earn it. You know, whether you're on the sucker side or you're on the pro side, you still got to get that win to earn that victory and earn that high that comes along with it. And the thrill players, they get even higher, you know, than the, than the professional guys because for them, they're not calculating the odds when they go in, not really. You know, they're just chasing, they're chasing that victory and they're on top of the world and they can't get it with drugs. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to say about the darker side, but there are drugs in pool, you know, just like in every other sport. And, but the thing is, is that in pool, you, you have to win. You have to have the skill to win to get that high. And all these guys like me who are chasing, who are gambling, and they're chasing that high that you have to earn. You can't buy it. So that's what the gambler case is to me. And uh, just as a tribute here as well, I put the lyrics on here to Kenny Rogers' song, The Gambler. And it's all here with the three verses. And of course, the last verse, which I'll say it to you, is basically, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done. And that's basically my gambler case and my entry. I hope you guys have a great time at the ICCS. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun out there. Say hi to everybody. Uh, hello, Will Proud and, and everybody else that I'm going to miss out there. But um, you guys have a good time. And uh, thank you again for all the opportunity that you've given me. Bye-bye.